guys, Michael Bester here. Welcome to another daily music tip presented by the Cape Town Music Academy. Today I want to talk specifically to the guitar players and specifically to those younger players who think you might want to become a session guitarist. Um, and I thought I would present you with five uh, points, just a very, very brief introduction to some of the things that I feel are important uh, skills and important elements to have uh, to make to make sure that you are ready to enter the 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 scene as a session guitarist. Of course, there's lots of other factors involved, and as I say, this is just a, a brief introduction to a few helpful points. First of all, point number one is I would encourage you to listen, listen, listen to lots and lots of music. Um, I would encourage you to listen to a broad range of musical genres and a broad range of eras. Listen to really old music right through to modern music. Listen to rock, listen to pop, listen to reggae, listen to country music, listen to metal, listen to anything, uh, I would say anything that, you know, is represented on the radio. There might be some music out there that is uh, very strange and and will never be mainstream, so to speak. Um, but even there, there's a lot to learn. But I think if you want to be a session musician, you need to understand that your primary uh, field that you're going to be working in is more commercial music. And so you want to be uh, listening intently and filling your mind and your musical memory with the guitar sounds, the guitar styles, the technical aspects of it and uh, the guitar parts that make up all these styles of music. How are these styles approached from the guitar? Um, second of all, this is a really big one. I would encourage you to work on your rhythm. One of the, the biggest strengths that you can bring into a recording situation or a live situation and one of the things that would probably make it very difficult for you to cope in those situations uh, is your rhythm if you don't have good rhythm if you have great rhythm if you've got solid time you will slot into a lot of musical situations much more easily so I would encourage you spend a lot of time practicing with a metronome spend a lot of time playing along to records, learning guitar parts and then playing it along to the recording um, and making even recording yourself playing along to a metronome or a recording or a backing track and listening back and, and analyzing whether your time is good or whether you still need to work on it. I can't emphasize enough how important strong rhythm in any style of music is. Um, don't neglect your rhythm guitar playing you will probably spend a much bigger part of your career playing rhythm guitar sort of in the background in a song, um, much more so than shredding a solo out front. And you don't want that to be the, the element that causes you to, to not get the gig because your, your rhythm playing isn't good. Number three, sounds and gear. Uh, this is, of course, a, a subject that I could talk about for hours and days. Um, but I thought if I uh, had the opportunity to go back and talk to myself before I entered the scene as a session musician, what would I advise myself to buy? Where would I advise myself to invest my money in terms of equipment and sounds? Um, I would say the first the two guitars that I use on 95% of the commercial work that I do are one, a very solid and versatile electric guitar, and two, a, a great, reliable uh, acoustic guitar that has a good sound plugged in. So, I would recommend that you look at getting a guitar that is versatile enough to cover a range of styles of music. This guitar has served me 
incredibly well for decades now. And what makes it so versatile is the fact that, so this is a Fender Stratocaster. It is um, possibly more versatile than some Fender Stratocasters because of the fact that it has a humbucking pickup in the bridge position and of course the two single coil pickups. And it has a five-way switch, which means that I have a broad range of tones available to me. It also has a, a tremolo arm, a, a whammy bar that I have slightly raised and that enables me to do uh, certain musical things that are required in some styles of music. And so all that to say that this guitar covers an incredibly wide range of sounds and styles. And I can play everything on this guitar from rock to pop, to country, to African styles, um, quite convincingly. Of course, you get guitars that are more specialized, but I would say if you were gonna start out, make sure you have one guitar that covers um, a lot of basses, that is reliable, that is in good shape, that stays in tune, and that you know very well. Secondly, a good, good acoustic guitar. This is a Martin. Uh, it happens to be a jumbo uh, guitar and it records beautifully. It, um, very importantly, it sounds really good when I plug it into a PA system because it has uh, a microphone, condenser microphone built into the guitar that I can blend into the signal so it doesn't sound, um, well, it sounds almost as good plugged in as it does live with a microphone in front of it. And so that is a very, very important and useful to know that you can plug your guitar in and the sound guy is able to get a really good sound. And again, your guitar stays in tune. The setup is done properly so it doesn't buzz and you can play different styles of music on it. Um, maybe if you were gonna go one more step beyond that, a good nylon string guitar will also go a long way and is is um, often required on gigs but I would say not as much as the first two so a good electric that is versatile and a good acoustic will take you a long way point number four preparation make sure that any gig that you are booked for that you put time aside that you schedule time in your diary to check out the music beforehand uh, make sure that you print the charts if they're sending you charts that you download the tracks if they're sending you tracks, that you listen to those charts, uh, to the tracks, that you, that you make notes on the charts, that you take note of the, the kind of sounds you need. Which guitars do I need? Which effects do I need? Do I need to take my Stratocaster or do I need to take my jazz guitar? Do I need to take my Gibson Les Paul because we're playing, you know, 80s rock music, whatever. Uh, pedals you need, do I need to take a wah-wah pedal because we're doing a disco song, whatever it is. Um, and of course learn the notes, practice the sounds, make note of, of any challenging parts in the songs and arrive to the rehearsal as prepared as possible. This is one of the best things you can do to ensure that you nail the gig and that people call you again. And of course, lastly, number five, your attitude on the gig. Um, all I can say here is be humble, be early, as mentioned in the previous point, be prepared. And once you're at the gig, um, relax and assume that things are not necessarily gonna go perfectly. They will be sitting around, there will possibly be challenging situations when things go wrong technically, when things go over time, when, um, you know, you arrive and the stage isn't ready and you have to wait around, when, uh, you know, it's a whole host of things that can cause you to get uh, maybe stressed out, maybe irritated, but stay cool and have a positive attitude and and consider it a blessing to be there. I think that's that's the biggest thing is if if you stay thankful to be working as a musician and to be paying your bills playing music. It is such a gift and that will take you a long way. Thanks guys.